You're listening to Walk It Out with Trisha Goyer, where we discover what it looks like to follow God and be swept away on the journey of a lifetime. Author of over 70 books, mom of 10, yes, 10, homeschooler and speaker, Trisha Goyer will explore what radical obedience to God's Word looks like. It's time to hear from God lovers who've dared to say yes. Listen in to Heart to Heart Chats and learn how others overcame doubts and fears. Discover how God used ordinary people to impact others one step at a time. If you're ready to get radical, get going, and make a difference in this world, you're at the right place. Here's your host, prolific writer, world traveler, people lover, and mega nap taker, Trisha Goyer. Hi friends, welcome to Walk It Out, and I am coming to you from the Goyer living room early in the morning. So I've been up for a couple hours and it's quiet, there's no kids running around, and I've been reading my Bible, answering emails, now recording this podcast. Now, one of the emails that I answered this morning is something that I get all the time, and it's people asking me, how do you do it all? Um, Okay, so this is one of my tips. Become a morning person. I'm up before everyone else. I am working on things when the house is quiet. Also, I spend time in God's Word to feed my soul. I need this time. I need this quiet. Taking time for God's Word has radically changed my life. As a person, as a mom, as a wife, it's changed my life perspective. I think of things differently because I spend time almost every day. I try to in God's word. It's changed my attitude. I have peace and I have hope. I have joy and it just sets me off in the right way. It's also changed my life agenda. Now, reading God's word in the early morning hours has been time where I felt God stirring things in me, changing my attitude, changing my heart changing my life direction. Um, It's been during these early morning hours where I felt God stirring me to help start a crisis pregnancy center, to start writing, to start speaking. I remember arguing with him on that one. No, I don't want to be a public speaker. Now I love it, of course, but at first I was so scared. Um, He's called me to adopt as I sit there and read about his word about pure religion is caring for the widows and the orphans. All of these things have come out of my early morning hours as I've sat here reading God's word, journaling, writing prayers, and really trying to turn my heart away from my agenda and over to God's. Now, I've written about all these things in my book, Walk It Out, which, which of course, this podcast is named after, and you could hear more about those stories and really go into hearing more about how God just has led me on this crazy, radical, awesome journey. But over and over again, as I sit here with God's word, I understand even more that my time with my Bible reading and my prayer isn't just for me and isn't just about me. Now, it's pretty obvious that it's about the people that God has called me to serve, whether it's a teen mom from the support group that I've started, the people that are still being served in Kalispell, Montana by Hope Pregnancy Center. I helped get that started in 1999 and it's still growing. They just got a medical unit that travels around a mobile medical unit, which I just love how God is just continuing to work in that community. Um, it's, It's about the kids we adopted. I mean, these kids have homes, have families because I felt that stir in my heart and my husband felt that stir on his heart. But in addition to that, even as I sit down this morning and read my Bible, and I'm I'm just all curled up on the couch here, I realized that it has changed the kids within my home too. Many times during the morning, my kids will come down, the little ones, I'll hear them thumping down the stairs, and they'll find me with my coffee or my tea, sitting on the couch reading my Bible. And hopefully, as they continue to grow, they'll know why this is so important to me, and they'll see it as a model for their lives and see that this is something that is important for them too. Now, right now in my home, in addition to my husband, my grandma who still lives with us, she's 89, our six kids that we have at home still, they're between the ages of eight and 16. Um, We also have my daughter, who's my adult daughter, and her baby, who are, she's a missionary in the Czech Republic, my daughter, not the baby. Well, I guess she's maybe a missionary. She just draws people um, to her cuteness. But uh, 
they're visiting from the Czech Republic. And I remember times when Leslie would find me on the couch, curled up, reading my Bible. And I remember clearly the one morning when I heard her in the kitchen and she came out with her cup of cocoa and her Bible. And it's so amazing to see that she's serving God, our adult children are serving God, following Him. And again, it comes back to this time that we step away, we focus on God, we turn to His Word, and we realize that God can change us during this time. Now, it doesn't have to be early morning hours. Some of you may have a different time where you spend in God's Word, but friend, I just encourage you, take the time, focus on God. Ask him to change your heart. Ask him to change your agenda. I know my world has completely changed. My daughter's world has completely changed. Our lives are different because of God's word, which can you guess that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I'm so excited to share my guest with you. Um, and you, You're just going to love the story. Christy Cameron is a best-selling author of fiction, and I've enjoyed some of her novels. But today we're going to be talking about her new Bible study series. Christy's also going to share how God's Word really transformed her life and, you know, called her to good things and hard things and just blessed her life and also really challenged her and stretched her. And I just know that you're going to be encouraged by her story. So listen up. You're going to hear Christy's heart, Christy's story, and you're going to be amazed by all God can do. Well, friends, I am so glad you're tuning in with me and Walk It Out. And one of my favorite things is just talking to people. And, you know, when I talk about Walk It Out, it's about applying God's word to our lives and how that just changes things. And for sure, that has changed today's guest. And I can't wait for you to hear more about her story and more about her books and all God is doing with her. So my guest today is Christy Cambron. And we have walked in the same circles for a long time. This is the first time we really like got to sit down and chat. So you guys get to tune in and listen to us. So welcome, Christy. Hey, thanks for having me. And you know, I think it's been something crazy like eight years that we've been walking in these same circles. Yes. I can't even believe that. <laughs> and loving the same types of subjects. I mean, that we write about. I know you wrote about Terrazin and I, my second book, Night Song, has some of Terrazin in it. So I mean, you know, the same type of topics and everything. We just, this is long overdue. So I'm so glad we're having having this opportunity now. It is. I feel like we should be having this conversation in the Met or the Louvre or something because of our love for art and history. Okay, for sure. We need to set that up. <laughs> like, totally. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Chat number two, Paris. We can totally okay. swing we that. We can totally do that. Yeah. One of us just needs to like get a big movie deal or something. Then we'll, we'll work that out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Totally working on that. <laughs> Well, Christy, for those who may not be um, familiar or just maybe have seen your books but don't know about you, can you just tell us a little bit about um, your family and your life and yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I am a vintage-inspired storyteller for Thomas Nelson Publishers, so I write historical fiction, and I also write Bible studies and have some new projects on the way um, that hopefully I will be able to talk about soon. And I'm married to Jeremy. We have been best friends for almost 23 years, but married for 18. We have three sons. And actually, on the date of this conversation, our oldest son just turned 13. Trisha, help me. Oh, help me. That's, so cool. <laughs> that's so cool, but it's a hard age. I'm telling you. It 13, is. 14. It's, it it's is. They're like growing and they want to do stuff on their own, but it's like oh, all these changes. Yes. And so our oldest, we officially today in this conversation, we have a teenager and our middle son, uh, our oldest is Brady and our middle son, Carson, he's nine years old and our youngest Colt, he turned six in December of 2018. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you got your house full with three boys. We do. And as of last fall, I've actually stepped into a role as a women's ministry leader at Southeast Christian Church in Louisville, Kentucky. So we are writing, traveling, speaking, verse mapping, and learning a ton in women's ministry. And so our family, along with the kids' schedules, uh, we, we're, busy. <laughs> we're busy. Yeah. Those are definitely busy years, busy ages, but in ministry. And, you know, when you take your kids along and, 
they see you doing ministry, I truly believe like that is so important. And I love now that I have like three adult kids and I can see like all those years I felt guilty because, okay, we're going to the church again and we're going to go do ministry here or we're going to go serve these teen moms. I thought I'm being such a horrible mom. My kids are getting dragged along or whatever, but really <laughs> like now that they're adults, they, I mean, they're in ministry and they're serving others and it's like, okay, God knew what he was doing. So, you know, I, I just love what you're doing. And I know God has totally just even shaken up your life and, um, you know, moved you out of the corporate world into what you're doing. So I just would love for you to share a little bit about that story. Yeah. And for our family, I love that you talk about your families doing this together. You know, you just take the kids along where you go. And our family is exactly like that. So when we have research trips, we try as often as we can to take the boys with us. Or if I have a speaking engagement, we try to make sure that someone in the family goes with me. And it's really fun. Even our oldest, uh, Brady, I remember years ago when my first book came out and we were selling books and, and you know how the kids, they just jump right in, right? And so we had books out in the foyer of this really beautiful place where we were having our first book launch party. And he was wheeling and dealing and selling books. And he, <laughs> he wasn't even saying, Hey, do you want a book? He's like, Hey, how many for you? Hey, how many for you? <laughs> and so it was just, it was just really funny to see him light up and say, yeah, I'm doing this for my mom. And I'm, you know, ultimately we're all doing everything that we do for Jesus. And so it, it's pretty cool to have our family along this journey. But yeah, you asked me to talk a little bit about our family's journey on the publication road and then how to get into ministry and just what that was like. And I'll take you back to 2013 after I had been through a couple of years of rejections in the industry and our family was, we were really working on getting published. It was something that had been on my heart for years. And on the day that I finally got a yes from Thomas Nelson, who's my publishing family, an hour later, I got a call from my dad and he said, well, this could be bad. I may have leukemia. And so mm. our family, like we were mountaintop valley walking, same day, one hour window, everything changed twice. And so we edited my debut novel, The Butterfly and the Violin. And I say we because our family, you're just going to hear that. <laughs> our family is in yeah. this together. <laughs> so, uh, but I was editing the book at the local cancer center while my dad was undergoing his infusions uh, for chemotherapy. And so just, just to have that start, that it was mountaintop and valley walking that really kind of mm -hmm. shaped our next five to six years, because it was walking with Jesus. It was some amazing things happening and doors opening and, and some good change, right? We can have that good change in our life. You know, new baby, I'm an author and God calling me to step out of corporate America. It was good change, but that's still change. <laughs> that's still, right. that's still, you know what I'm saying? That's when you still have to cling to Jesus in the everyday. And it was in 2014, uh, months after my dad had passed away, that God began to impress upon my heart. It was almost like you could feel kind of his thumb pressing, <laughs> pressing, pressing harder mm -hmm. and telling me it was time to go. But I was very heavily tethered to corporate America. I'd been in the business. Um, I was in healthcare and I was a corporate trainer and wrote curriculum for 15 years. And I was a traveling trainer. So I was on airplanes and in airports a lot. And God really began to impress upon my heart to just literally walk away. And, and we had no guarantees, but to walk away. And so I remember my husband and I praying for even three to four years before that, because ministry had been on my heart so heavy for many years. And I kind of, I kind of go back, Tricia, and I wish that I'd been called to seminary at 20 like that. That would have been amazing, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that just wasn't the journey. It just wasn't the path. And so I, I didn't feel God impress upon my heart until my early thirties. And so we did, we walked away. We had one afternoon where it all just kind of came came to a head, right? And my husband came home from the office and we sent the kids to their room. And I said, I can't do this anymore. And when I said that, I meant mm -hmm. I can't not do what God is telling me to do anymore. <laughs> and so I remember I just kind of cried it out. And you know, someone really loves you when you're ugly crying on their shoulder, you know, <laughs> I, I was yes. really ugly crying in that moment. And he let me kind of get it all out. And I said, okay, I, I, I got to do this. I feel like I need to quit. What do you think? And he, you know, just wisdom paused and just kind of looked at me and said, well, I trust God and I believe in you. So let's do it. And I gave my notice the next day wow. and walked away from a corporate career. And it's so funny. And when we look at like in the world's eyes, it's like you have the guaranteed thing. You have this career, and you have, <laughs> you know, you, you the success and you've, you've been doing it for a long time. But God's saying, take those steps of faith and take these 
um, you know, walk with me and I have something for you, but you can't see it. It's like there's <laughs> nothing laid out. So what was it like taking those steps of faith? I love that you even asked that question because I didn't know what it was going to be like in those first days. And I, I wish I could go back and talk to that gal from five to six years ago and even just have this conversation and say, I thought that the big faith moment was in the walking out, right? Like I thought it was the big leap. I thought, okay, this is the, this is mm -hmm. the moment of brave. This is where I've got to have all the courage. And that's absolutely untrue. Yes. You had to have some bravery to do that first step, but that was kind of the easy part because then we go, yeah, then right. we go through this five to six years of this transition time for us. And my goodness, I only was able to even kind of start talking about it last year, last summer, when the verse mapping Bible studies came out and was able to talk about how difficult this transition was for our family. There were a couple of times we almost lost our house. We had to go to court, like never been to court before. Didn't know what that was like. Um, even, even had to Google, mm. like, what do you wear to court? Cause I didn't know. <laughs> like, and, and so this, this transition was, it was so difficult for us to say, are we going to stay on this road with Jesus? No matter how hard it gets, no matter what happens, we had times where, and there were some pride walls. I didn't even know I had built those up and God was tearing those down systematically, brick by brick, tearing those walls down. We had to learn to receive. I had to look at some corners of my heart that to be honest, were actually kind of ugly because there were times where I thought, oh, if someone receives, right? If there's someone who's in need, oh, I imagine they, they must be grateful. They're probably very grateful to receive. And, and I'm being really open with you, Tricia, because this is, this is not pretty to yeah. even talk about some of those attitudes that we have in our heart that you don't even know that they're there. Yeah. Um, but to have times where we received uh, gifts of food from the Salvation Army, or we had people who loved on us, and we had people who were caring for us to make sure that we weren't going to lose our house, and just just things like that. But at the same time, I'm like, am I going to stay on this journey that God has asked me to, that takes me to ministry? Are we going to stay in, in the fight? And that was big for us to do for five to six years. Uh, so the transition, I would say it's the day by day by day, getting your sandals in the dust of this story road that you're walking with Jesus and just keeping your eyes on him. And even if you fall down, because you will, like we will <laughs> fall down, get back up, but keep our eyes fixed on him, no matter how hard it gets. That's what we had to do in that season. Yeah. And you almost think that if you're doing what God asked, that it should be yeah. easy. <laughs> like I'm doing what you asked me to do. And I was thinking, you know, we, could, we adopted seven kids and in, you know, three different sets of kids. Um, but I remember there's times when kids are just out of control and there's anger and there's holes in the walls and, you know, just verbally all these words coming at me and I'm picking out gum off the carpet <laughs> right? and, you know, I'm just all this stuff. I remember just one day I'm like, God is, I mean, is this what you call me to do? Because this is so hard. Like, I had the nice house and, you know, we, I had it all together. Oh, right. Like I had my writing time in my office. I mean, I just felt like really, this is, this is this mm -hmm. hard, hard thing. And I felt him saying, yeah. And, you know, and of course I could look at the kids now and I yeah. wouldn't trade them for anything, but it wasn't easy. And it's not like God says, okay, take these steps of faith and everything will work out perfectly. And you're never going to have to doubt or question or cry or worry um, but instead, it, I love how you said it. it's not just even that leap of faith. This is a hard thing. It's the daily walking. It, out. it absolutely is the daily walking it out. And, and I remember there was a time where we were really, really struggling and I was on a deadline and I had made a commitment to my publisher to, to get some things to them. And our Internet got shut off because we couldn't pay the bill. And so what are you going to do? And I thought, OK, I'll go to a coffee shop. Well, the problem was we didn't even have enough money to get a $5 cup of coffee. So, so I was like, okay, what am I going to do? And my husband was like, don't worry. I got it. You know, go get your stuff together so you can go to the coffee shop. And I'm in the bedroom and, and Trisha, I, this is so real. You just talked about pulling the, the bubble gum out of the carpet. Like this is one of those moments. Like this was that yeah. moment. So I'm, I'm in our bedroom and I am trying to be an adult. I'm trying to adult through this, but I'm crying like a little girl. And I hear a knock at the door. And so I open the bedroom door and it's our oldest son. And he is standing there with a huge smile on his face. And he has his hands open and it's full of quarters. And he's like, mom, mom, I oh. think this is seven or eight dollars. You're going to have to count it. <laughs> but I think, I think this is seven or eight dollars. Oh. We went into our banks and we got, we have enough money for you to go to the coffee shop and get that five or so dollar cup of coffee. Don't get two. Cause I know enough that you can't get two, but you can get one <laughs> and, and you go do what you need to do. That 
daily walking it out when you know we are all in this thing together, that is actually a blessing. We learned so much from that season. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was hard. And yeah, it wasn't pretty. And it didn't feel good. And it really was not comfortable. But guess what? We did it together. We were like, we're all in on this thing. And walking with Jesus, those are some of the times where I could feel God's presence the most. He's always with us, but I could feel him the most in those beautiful moments where I'm learning a lot. Like I learned so much during that. Season. Yeah, absolutely. And your kids they do. So I hope, I hope they did. Too. And yeah, I just feel like tears in my eyes as you share that story. I'm like, oh my goodness. And I think that's a Trisha Goyer exclusive. I'm not sure I've ever shared that story on a podcast before. So oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, well, I just love, I just love you sharing your heart and, um, you know, I just, and seeing what God has just continued to do with your books. And we'll be talking about life mapping um, in a minute, but I want to talk about your fiction first, because I mean, so much of you, what you write about is just things I love too. And I mean, I love the butterfly and the violin. That's the only one I've read so far, you know, because I mean, I need more time to read, but <laughs> but it's right. life and it's kids. But I did, I did love that one. But how did you get started um, just in the, the books that you've chosen and these um, these historical aspects. How did you get started down that path? Well, I'm going to take you really far back. I'm not going to tell y'all how old I am because that would just reveal way too much. But I'll, I'll, take, <laughs> I'll take you I'll take you back almost all the way to when I was five years old, and I had this dream on my heart to be a Disney animator. Like that was that was the dream. However, sometimes our dreams outweigh our abilities. And so God gave me these hands where I can't really draw very well, can't paint, can't sculpt. It was before computer aided design because, you know, it was the 80s and all that. You know, we didn't have that. So I didn't know how I could be an artist. So I thought that meant I can't be an artist. I can't create. And I'd always had this love of visual storytelling. My mom would take my sister and I to the library just about every week in the summer. And I would go to the art section. You know, my sister, she wanted to be a teacher and ran to the fiction section. And to this day, she's the biggest reader I know. And she's a teacher. So there you go. <laughs> but, uh, but for me, it was so different. I went to the art section and I would pull down these thick volumes of Disney animation and art history as a kid, six, seven, wow. eight, nine years old. And I would sit there and I would just thumb through these books and I fell in love with visual storytelling, but I had no idea that God was cultivating that love on my heart and I had no idea what he was going to do with it. So I walk into my first art history classes in college. So, you know, when you start college, you have to do the basic stuff, the English, the math and, and all right. of that. And I'm a very artsy girl. So math for me was kind of my nightmare. So I thought, all right, if I have to take nightmare classes to do this thing, I want to take one class that's for me, that's for my heart. And I knew I couldn't take studio art because I got these hands, right? That just can't do it. So I walked into an art history class and it was like the Holy Spirit. I'd already met Jesus at 16, baptized at 17. So I knew who he was. I just didn't know that that was going to be where he was going to meet me. And I walk into this class and hear this whisper on my heart, you're home. This is where you're supposed mm. to be. And so I'm in art history. And so I start to go to school for art history and research writing. And that is where I find, okay, that maybe I can't draw or sculpt or paint with my hands, but he's going to have me paint with words. And so I had no idea then, no clue that he was going to call me out and ask me to go into publishing because, Trisha, I knew nothing about publishing, knew nothing about yeah. creative writing. Um, I got B's in English. Like, that's kind of the joke in the family. Like, I got B's in English, and here I am writing books. And I was not a reader. But I was in one of my art history classes years ago, a decade before The Butterfly and the Violin ever came to my heart. And I was in an art history class, and our professor began to put images up on the wall. And this is when we had, like, slideshows and so she was putting images up and there were some images of landscapes, music notes, butterflies, and they were beautiful images. And then they changed. She kind of flipped the switch on us and they began to become more menacing in nature. And so we understood with the watchtowers, the guards with guns, mm. the dogs, the striped pajamas, like we knew this was art about the Holocaust. And so we thought it was modern art. We thought it was a commentary on art of the Holocaust. And then she told us, no, this is actually art that was created by prisoners in concentration camps. And when Auschwitz was liberated on January 27th of 1945, this art was left behind. They found this art in the camps. 
and it was in stairwells, it was in walls, there was even things that were that were buried in the dirt. I mean, it was just incredible to me that this creative thing, right? The art of creation could be on a soul's heart so heavy that they would risk everything right. in the most horrific circumstances. And I know because you've written about this, so I know you get what I'm talking about. That was where the idea first came to begin to write books about this. And I wasn't really brave in the beginning because I felt like the Holocaust is a topic that demands such reverence, right? And so I wasn't really brave to do it, but I did know that in this space where art and history and faith in Jesus Christ, where those three things come together, that is where God has asked me to spend my life. And whether it is writing Bible studies or whether it's writing fiction and storytelling from the stage or whether it's in women's ministry, whatever the job role is, it has to fit in that space. And that's where he's asked me to use my gifts and to spend my life. Mm -hmm. I love that. And it's just really kind of facets of a diamond. Like you just turn it one way, but it's all the same you. Like it's yes, just yes. This part of me and this is another part of me. And I mean, I, I love that. And I, I just feel that so much. It's like, it's all different, but it's all the same because it's all part of me. And <laughs> right. like God is just showing us. And I totally agree. I remember when I was working on my first World War II novel, um, it was 2003 when it was published. And so, I mean, this was a long time ago and I had these three little kids at home and I thought, who am I to write about this? Mm, um, right. You know, I'm this mom. I lived in, Mont in Montana at the time. I'm in Arkansas now. But, um, and I just thought like, this should be like someone with this big history degree. And I don't know, <laughs> who am I? And I just felt God's spirit because my first book is about liberation and the liberation of um, Mount Housing Concentration Camp. And God's saying, tell your story of liberation. You know, mm. I, you were once enchained in sin and I was your great liberator. And, wow. and, and so much it's like, you know, it's a visual picture of the spiritual journey that God takes us on. And I know your books are so much like that, too. There's that spiritual journey. And then the story is kind of the visual that wraps around that spiritual journey. It absolutely is. And for that reason, regardless of whether I write a book that is all historical fiction or whether it's a time split mm -hmm. and it has a contemporary storyline, for me, that story, that connectivity that God is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, yeah. and for eternity, the way to connect that in my mind has been art because art is something that is evergreen, right? It's, it's, it's right. always ongoing. And so for me to be able to tie the past to the present in a very relatable way, Art did that for me, and I loved unpacking the layers. It's almost like when you walk into a museum and you can see a painting on the wall, you can appreciate it for the beauty of what is on the outside. But then when you begin to unpack the history behind it, who the artist was, what was going on in the world when they created this, what was going on with them, you know, why was this their expression? And you get to learn about the culture and how people lived and, and how they saw God. I mean, it's, it's just an incredible way of viewing ourselves, of looking at humanity. And so I always wanted to make sure that every story that I tell has this aspect of history and the research that is real to life. But then we also have this artistic bent that comes in and weaves the faith portion together. Okay, friends, we're taking a short break because there's someone that I want to introduce to you. I love sharing my friends. And today I want to share my friends in the form of sharing one of my favorite podcasts. So do you have sometimes feel like no one is praying for you? Do you struggle to realize that God hears your prayers and wants to intercede on your behalf? Do you love the Bible? I know, friends, I love the Bible. Then consider listening to my friend Mary DeMoose podcast. It's called Pray Every Day. You can download Pray Every Day app on the iTunes Store or Google Play, which is just amazing. She has her own app for that. You can listen on an Alexa device. And if I'm in the kitchen, I'll say, Alexa, play Pray Every Day with Mary DeMuth. And then I see my friends, hear my friend's sweet voice coming through. Or you can go to prayeveryday.show for daily encouragement. Mary reads the scripture, then prays for you according to that scripture. And these are not fluffy prayers, friends. These are heartfelt prayers. I've been listening for a year now, and I could tell you, it's deeply influenced my joy and helped me to know that God is always with me. So be sure you check out Pray Every Day by my friend, Mary. Okay, so now we're going to jump over to first mapping. <laughs> right. Because it's the same thing. It's, a, it's the researching. 
it's the peeling back the layers. It's the making something visual by writing out what, you know, God's telling you, writing out the verses that is bringing history, the Bible, <laughs> right? <laughs> the Bible and what God's given us to life for today's reader. And I just love, it's like the same elements that you're using in your fiction is in your life, in your verse mapping. Yeah. So I just love how you're doing that. It absolutely is, Tricia. That is a great way of stating it because when I was writing fiction, when I started writing historical fiction, it's like taking one fact and you're wrapping a story around it, right? Mm -hmm. And and so you're making things up. You're taking one one or two facts and you're wrapping a story around it. So when I transitioned over to nonfiction, I don't know why I was so surprised by this, but it was very similar. But it was taking the story that's true <laughs> and kind of peeling back those layers and unpacking it. So the research parts of storytelling that is really my favorite part is even before I get to the writing, it's the research. That is my favorite part of it. And so when, mm -hmm. when we were doing the verse mapping Bible studies, the cool thing is I was able to be me. Just like you said, I was able to be me, do what God's asked me to do and peel back those research layers. But here's the awesome thing. It's truth. The Bible is yeah. the Bible is true. Like this is God's story, his story of love for man so much that he sent God, uh, he sent Jesus to earth and Jesus's grace is right there. And we're able to peel back that story of his love for us. I just get chills. I mean, I, you can tell I'm super passionate about it because it's his story. It's his love for us. And I just love, I mean, I know when I first became a Christian, it was like, I'd read a verse here and there I'd have a devotional book. But really, I felt God like just telling me because I was so passionate about writing and I felt like, oh, maybe I should like read the Bible before I start writing. So <laughs> I like, would read a couple of verses and then I got more and more into the Bible and pretty soon it's like all this is in there and I've been completely ignoring it the whole time and just the Holy Spirit just opening up, you know, meaning to me and verses that would just, yes. that I read this that, that morning would just like transform my walk during the day. And it's just like, this whole thing is just there. And I, that's why I feel like with the verse mapping, you're like, it's all there. It's all God's goodness. It's all his truth. Now let's find it. Let's dig it out. Oh, let's yes. search it. So well, you, I would love to hear. Oh, no, I was going to say, you said it. You said, let's find it. Let's dig it out. That's exactly what verse mapping is. Because a few days after my dad passed away, my mom gave me his Bible and he actually had three Bibles. And so to know that my dad, he got saved and baptized at 60 years old and had, wow. yes, and had two years of Jesus changing his heart and his life in such a way that by the time he passed away, he'd had two years, two years of time with Jesus. And so when he passed away, we had three Bibles and there was one Bible that my mom had gifted him when they were dating in the late seventies. And it's pretty pristine, right? Not really used a whole lot in all those years, but then the Bible that I got, and my sister got one. And then the Bible that I got, it, it's a treasure, Trisha, because there are highlighter marks all over this Bible of what he studied with Jesus in the last two years of his life. Oh, yeah. Wow. And so to this day, I won't touch this Bible with a highlighter. I'll use everything else, markers, Sharpies, whatever you got. But I won't use a highlighter because I have this legacy of what God did in my dad's life. And so when I walked away from corporate America, this was all stirring at the same time I'm writing fiction. I went to a Bible study at church for the first time because I never had time before. Right. You know, I'm working 60, 70, 80 hours a week. And I'm moonlighting as a fiction author on Friday and Saturday nights and then repair on Sunday and go back to work on Monday. So there was no time to be in community. And so I walked into this Bible study and it hit me so hard. This is where the find it, the dig it out part comes because I realized that I had the Bible in a chemo room, right? I had the Bible in an ICU room when my dad passed away. I had the Bible at a graveside during those five to six years of time that we're valley walking and sometimes mountaintop, but we're valley walking with Jesus. But I didn't have the Bible in the good times and the joy moments just because it was my oxygen. And that's where verse mapping came for me. Uh, one of my best friends in corporate America knew that I kind of like structure. You know, I wrote curriculum for all those years. And so my mind was was really kind of turning. The gears were going. And I thought, all right, if this Bible is going to be my oxygen, it's my field manual for living. There has to be a teaching structure behind it. And I'm going to research until I find it. And that's where verse mapping came for me. And I really have this kind of busy lifestyle. And I needed something that was, number one, going to help me understand it. Because 
let's just be honest. I, I was a little embarrassed to admit in Bible study, like, I don't understand what I'm reading. Do you, do you ever have people that say that on the podcast? But like, I didn't, I didn't get it. You know, I didn't understand it. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember just even though I'd been a Christian probably five or six years, people would say, and God says this, and then this verse, and I'd be like, how do they know that? <laughs> like, how do they, did they just pull that out of thin air? Because it was just like, you know, that five minute reading that devotion and getting through the day type of thing. And it just, it, I mean, it takes digging into God's word and spending that time. And then it's like this whole world opens up. <laughs> yeah. And as we're talking, I'm holding my first verse mapping journal uh, from 2014. And my first maps, they there's a lot of blank space on the page because I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I, didn't, I just knew that the Holy Spirit was really talking to my heart. And you know what? I want you to start verse mapping. Do what works for you. Start in the book of Acts and you keep going until I tell you to stop. Well, to this day, five some years later, he has not told me to stop yet. So I'm still going. <laughs> but, uh, but for me, it was, all right, I'm going to take, I'm going to go verse by verse. I'm going to take one verse. I'm going to dig in. If there's something I don't understand, or there's kind of a rabbit trail of curiosity, right? We love those questions. I'm going to dig in verse by verse. I'm going to look up this verse in multiple translations and we're wordy girls. So I know you're going to love this, but if you see a word that's used more than once, or there's, there's a kind of a trend forming, or maybe in one translation, it's used in the past tense, but the others are present tense. Well, why? Like I kept saying, why? I want to, I want to understand that. I want to unpack that. And so then those words or phrases that you see, or that really grab your heart, kind of leap off the page and grab you, you look those up in the Hebrew for the Old Testament or the Greek for the New Testament, you get some context under you, right? And then you take what you're learning, and this is where the storytelling comes in. I absolutely love this. You you wrap a story around it. So what's happening on stage in that verse? What's happening right there? And then what's happening off stage, so to speak? So before or after the verse or in the chapters or the books before or after? What's happening right there in the verse? To whom? And if there's a city that you don't know, guess what? Look it up on a first century map. <laughs> or, or if there's something you don't understand about the, the Roman, you know, if you're in Acts, you don't understand the Roman Empire. Look that up. Look up that information and jot down your notes. So you're getting the actions that's happening in the verse. You're getting the story. And then the last piece, and this is probably the most critical, but it's the shortest piece. It's the life application, the outcome of everything the Holy Spirit's taught you. You should be able to sum that up on a post-it note. This journal that I'm looking at from 2014 has post-it notes all over the place. And it's summing up what the Holy Spirit taught me in one to two lines that should be quick hit, sticky information that I can apply to my life today. And very quickly, I just took your listeners through verse mapping, the five steps, which is select your verse, the design, the development, the actions, and the outcome. And it's as simple as that. Yeah. And what I love about it is, you know, because I homeschool my kids and I see, you know, we do Bible study and I teach them, but I'm just telling them like, this, this is your outcome. Oh, this is this is what you need to take away. And so I'm like, oh my goodness, I need to get this Bible study and do it. I have a 14 year old and two 16 year olds um, and then I have little ones, but I'm like, this would be perfect for them. Cause then it's the Holy Spirit yeah. speaking to them instead of mom saying, this needs to be your outcome <laughs> right. from this one, which, you know, they still need mom to teach them and train them, but it's just different. When we when we read the verse and we realize, you know, then the Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts, and this is this is what He is speaking to. And us. it's definitely something that you can do together as families with your kids. And I love that we live in the age of social media. I mean, there's some things that I don't love about it, but there are some things that are incredible. So if you're working with your teenagers and they want to look up Corinth. You can go on YouTube and you can tour Corinth. I mean, like, it's just incredible stuff right. like that that makes the Bible come alive for us. And it's that research that just jumps off the page and it just grabs your heart. And it's like you said, it's the Holy Spirit working through you and working with you. And he's our guide. He's our teacher. And that was big for me. It was new, but it was really big for me. Uh, changed my life in the word. Yeah, I love that so much. So you have Luke. Um, are both Luke and Acts available They are, right yes. Now? We have Luke gathering the goodness of God's word and Acts feasting on the abundance of God's word. And if you have any listeners that are like, yeah, I just want to try it. You know, I just want to see if this is for me. You can, it's super easy. You can go to versemapping.com. We'll get you linked up. And then if you really do enjoy it, kind of make it your own. We've got some links there as well for you to join community because we, we know that we can stick with it and learn better when we're in community. So we'll get you connected at versemapping.com. Oh, I love that so much. And I know also um, 
there I saw on your website that they they can get a free like verse mapping uh, verse map email to them um, if they sign up on your yeah. website. So I mean I love all these different things that that you're doing, and I think this is so important just to teach people I mean how to study God's word. And I mean, don't, doesn't it just bring you huge joy? Just know that like this morning, there's people all over the world that were pulling out their Bible studies and digging into God's word and letting him speak to his, his you know, their hearts. And then you had a part of it. It really is just something that changed my life. And I thought, you know what, if it worked for me and it changed my life and my walk with Jesus, if it could do that for anyone else, I'm in, I'm all in on this journey. So yeah, it's, um, it's pretty, pretty awesome just to think that, that we can open up, open the word and understand it and walk with Jesus in that way every day. Absolutely. You know, and I love how it came back to, you know, that, that step of faith, we talk about that and then walking through the hard stuff and, and there's still hard stuff, you know, every day we're facing hard stuff, but we get to see kind of the fruit of, okay, this is what God was up yes. to. <laughs> you know, we had maybe had like not even a glimpse of what, what he was going to do, but what would you maybe say to someone who is in that place that, that's thinking, I know God's mm-hmm. calling me to this, but I don't know, like, you know, they almost have to leave their safety net and their security to step out. What would you say? Well, actually, what I have that? said to people like that, and I'll give you an example. I've had parents who have talked to me before and said, hey, can, can I grab you for a second? I, I'd like for you to talk to my teenager because he or she is considering being a writer and I'm just really concerned about this. And I'm like, oh no, I'm the, I'm the wrong person to talk to because <laughs> I'm going to tell them dream big and then dream bigger with God. And if there is a flicker of a Mm -hmm. flame on your heart to do something for God, you don't know what it is. You don't know where that road leads. I'm still going to be that person that's going to say, yeah, you don't want to talk to me because I'm going to say you you can dare to dream with God. You can follow God. You can trust God. Whatever he's asking you to do, I would just tell your listeners today, no matter where you think that road leads, respond. When he's laid something on your heart, respond. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's easier kind of sometimes for us, but harder when yes. it comes for him. Like <laughs> when they're wanting to do something, you know, my, my daughter at 20 is like, I feel God telling me to, to, you know, move to Europe and become a missionary. And it's like, okay, that was really cute when you were eight. <laughs> like that's the other side of the world and you're only 20. But, you know, now my daughter's 26 and she lives in Europe and is married and is a missionary and has a baby. I mean, yes. you can see it now, but it is sometimes harder when our kids are taking yeah, those so steps. Yeah, so Trisha, I'm just going to go ahead and call you when our oldest son is going to get his driver's <laughs> license because I can't even let go for that. I can't even imagine that. But Europe, I mean, yeah, we're going to have to talk more. Coffee, coffee meetings. <laughs> yeah, abso- absolutely. <laughs> it is. But, you know, the, the driver's license builds up to the, you know, moving across I the trust world. you. I believe you in that. <laughs> there you go. Well, Christy, I have just enjoyed this so much. I just enjoy your heart. I just enjoy just your passion and enthusiasm for just encouraging people to just do what God is calling them to do. And your life is an example of of that and then thank you just for being honest and open to you know sometimes it's so hard like oh yeah look at look at all god's done but we really need to share those hard places too because you know people know that god is there it's not just the high (laughs) peaks that he's there but he's there absolutely well i hope i get a chance to uh to chat with you again and we have some big things coming up i'm not yet at liberty to share what those are but for anyone um, who stops by christycambron.com and signs up for my writing desk newsletter uh, we have some huge news that i'll be sharing soon Wow. I know. That's, that's just fun. a little teaser, right? <laughs> a little teaser. All right. Well, I cannot wait to hear. And um, like you said, Chris, just your um, name, ChristyCameron.com, is where they can find all the information about your novels and your life mapping and um, your family. I mean, all those things are there. So thank you so much just for sharing your heart with us today. Thanks for having me. I have so enjoyed it. Well, friend, I am so thankful for my friend, Christy, and I know that you were blessed by hearing her story to check out her Bible study, spend time in God's word. And I know that as you do both, that you will be encouraged and blessed. And I know my heart is just full after talking to Christy today. And really, I just love hearing how God changed her her life completely as she sought him and sought his wisdom. 
And that's what the Walk It Out verse is going to be talking about. Actually, verses are going to be talking about today. And today we're in Job 28, 25 through 28. And this is just what I happen to be reading in my morning devotion quiet time. And it fits in perfectly with what we're talking about today. And it says, When God fixed the weight of the wind and distributed the water by measure, when he established a limit for rain and a path for the lightning, he considered wisdom and evaluated it. He established it and examined it. He said to mankind, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to turn from evil is understanding. And I just love that so much. The fear of the Lord. The understanding that God is great and holy. And that his word tells us how to approach him. And it also tells us how he has offered us grace and hope and mercy for our own lives. And again, that is Job twenty-eight, twenty-five through 28. And sometimes it's these random parts of the, the Bible that we may, may never give to. But if we spend time in God's word and really dig in and just get the fullness of all that his God, his word says, it really makes a difference. So I'm going to be thinking about that today in my life, about his wisdom and about the fear of the Lord and understanding his holiness. And just think about how that can impact my everyday life, just like it does impact Christie's everyday life. So let me just pray for you. God, I thank you so much for your word that you have given it to us. I thank you that it is living and active and that the words are not dead, but as we as if we read them, um, they will transform our hearts and our souls, our lives, our actions, our steps. I thank you so much for Christy, Lord. I thank you for all that you've done. I thank you for her obedience, even though at times they were desperate and things were hard, that that her family, Christy's family, has been faithful to you to step out what you are calling her, what you are calling them to do. So I just pray for her, Lord. I pray for every listener out there, maybe that hasn't taken the time to spend in God's word and really hasn't taken the time to explore the whole Bible. And Lord, as we fear you, as we understand your holiness, um, and not fear you in a, I'm scared you're going to smite us and hit us with lightning, but fear you in understanding that you are great and holy God and that you have a plan for our lives. You have wonderful things for us that we will just come before you. We'll take the time. We'll make the time. Maybe wake up early, stay up late, um, put down Facebook, whatever it takes, Lord. I pray that you will stir our hearts to turn to you more. I thank you so much for every listener out there, and I thank you for the transformations that you have planned for him or her as they step out and and follow you in radical ways. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, friend, I am so thankful that you're here. It's still quiet in the Goyer house. No one has woken up yet. I might have the chance to answer a few more emails. We'll see. Um, but I'm so thankful that I'm able to spend this time with you. I'm I'm thankful that you spend this time. I know there's lots of podcasts to choose from. There's TV shows and uh, Netflix and um, other radio programs and all the things that you spend time with. I just pray that your time with me today on Walk It Out will be a blessing. And friend, if it has encouraged you, I just pray that um, you will share this podcast with a friend tell them you're not going to leave Chrissy's story. You're going to love it. And then encourage them maybe together you can go through Chrissy's Bible study. And I know that will be a blessing to all of you. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for being a part of my life. If you have any thoughts or questions, you could always email me at hello at trishagoyer.com and I will love to hear from you. Have a wonderful day, friends. Thanks for listening to Walk It Out. Head over to the show notes for this podcast and all past episodes at www.walkitoutpodcast.com. If you love the show, share it with someone you know who can make a radical difference in the world. We love new friends. See you next time.